So we've seen now that if you have a changing magnetic field, that creates an electric field. We saw that with this, right? I mean, we wouldn't get it, we wouldn't be able to light up that light if there weren't a changing electric field inside the coil, driving that current. So you can logically ask, what if you have a changing electric field? Does that give you a magnetic field? Turns out it does. It actually does. This is a little bit beyond the scope of the course, but it's something that you should see perhaps once. Not really beyond. Um, imagine that you're charging up a capacitor. So you have a current flowing in this side, giving you positive charge on this plate. And of course, current is flowing off, away from the other one, leaving you negative charge here. That creates an electric field in between the two plates, which is varying in time. It's increasing. The magnitude of the electric field is growing. What that does is creates magnetic field lines surrounding the electric field lines. Now, so far, everything we've talked about, uh, the only way to create a magnetic field is to have some, let's say, a wire carrying current. Moving charge creates that field by your right hand rule, right? Here, we've created a, a magnetic field only by changing the electric field in that region. There's no current flowing in between the plates, just an increasing electric field. So yes, in fact, when you do work out the, the physics, a time varying electric field gives you a magnetic field. Also note that the direction of the magnetic field is perpendicular to the electric field lines everywhere inside here, right? Every, anywhere you would go, if the electric field points like that, magnetic field lines are <coughs> perpendicular to it. So, we have that a changing electric field gives you a changing magnetic field, and a changing magnetic field gives you a changing electric field. And this is true even if there's no nearby electric charges, or, no, or even any magnets, okay? You don't need to have that somewhere in space, just in a vacuum. If you have an electric field that's changing, you have a magnetic field that's changing and vice versa. Now, and, and also as I said, the directions of the electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other. This uh, was a consequence of the original equations written down by Maxwell back in 1856 to describe the interrelationship, the interplay between electric and magnetic fields and forces and currents. And that's how we get electromagnetic waves. An electromagnetic wave is just that, a time varying electric field and magnetic field. As the electric field increases in time, the magnetic field increases in time. Now note, as, as we've drawn it here, this represents our plane wave, and it's propagating in this direction, okay? And uh, if the electric field points up, which I guess is the y direction, that's the z direction, this is a field propagating in the x direction here. So if the electric field is in the, the y direction, the magnetic field is in the horizontal direction, the z direction, 90 degrees away from it. So whatever the direction the electric field is, the magnetic field uh, is like that. It actually follows a cross product rule E cross B such that the energy goes in the direction of E cross B and the direction of propagation is in the E cross B direction if you, if you like vector cross products. So E cross B gives you a vector, that's Y cross Z gives you a vector in the X direction. Now, we draw it like this. It, it's not necessarily the best way to help you visualize it. Do you remember when we, this brings it around to the first uh, lecture of this course, right? When we talked about what is a plane wave in space. And we mostly talked about, let's say, sound waves, right, at that point. Where you could kind of visualize that there is a wave front, uh, or wave crests, and at the wave crest, the pressure in the sound wave is high. And it's high across a, a plane, in a plane wave, that plane is moving. 
and you have plane after plane after plane moving corresponding to the wave crest. It's exactly the same for an electromagnetic wave. If you're far away, let's say, from a radio transmitter, then the plane wave coming at you from the radio transmitter might look like that, but you know, it doesn't matter if you put your antenna here or here or here, you'll still pick up the plane wave coming at you, right? It's, it's, it's spread out in three-dimensional space. You can create electric, electromagnetic waves uh, just by setting up an oscillating electric or magnetic field. Now, how would you do that? Well, again, let's appeal to an earlier part of this course. Uh, remember how, how we could make a standing wave in a tube that's closed at one end and open at the other, right? You can have a, a, a pressure wave that has a, a node at the closed end. That's a displacement node and it's a pressure anti-node. Let's talk, think about it in terms of a displacement node. Well, for electromagnetism, what is the analog of that? Well, a long straight wire, right? So suppose you shoot a current down a wire, but it's just hanging in space, you know, that's not connected to anything at the other end. Well, you can do that. You can actually do that. You just, you, you, just, uh, you know, force current in one end. So if you oscillate the current at, at one end of the wire and it goes down to the other end of the wire, if you do it at just the right frequency, you can set up a standing wave in that wire. If you do that, guess what you have? You have an antenna. And that antenna is, is broadcasting or it's uh, creating an electromagnetic wave surrounding it going off in all directions. That's how an antenna transmitter works for radio. And it, exactly the same equations govern it that govern a tube open at one end and closed at the other end. And of course you can have other kinds of antennas as well. Suppose you make an antenna that's a loop and now you put an oscillating suppose I take this loop right and now I put a, a some frequency oscillating current in there so that means the current goes this way then this way then this way then this way that means the magnetic field is oscillating up and down and up and down and up and down that propagates in all directions as an electromagnetic wave away from uh, this loop of current so it's easy to do. We can create electromagnetic waves, certainly radio waves like that. Uh, to create any kind of uh, electromagnetic wave though, you know, you have to think about where you are in the, in the spectrum. Now, uh, we're gonna learn a lot about this portion of the spectrum in the coming weeks, the visible portion of the spectrum between about 400 nanometers and 700 something nanometers uh, in wavelength. But that's just a tiny slice of the full electromagnetic spectrum which can range over, well, really any values. We can have radio waves that, go, that have uh, wavelengths as long as kilometers. The, the Navy has big antennas in northern Michigan that use uh, ultra low frequency, uh, very long wavelength um, that it puts out those, those frequencies to communicate with submarines who are underwater. And the submarines underwater trail an antenna behind them, which is about a, you know, half a kilometer to a kilometer long and picks up these signals from this antenna in Michigan. That wave propagates all around the earth and uh, some of it penetrates under the water just a little bit. It's extremely low frequency, so you can't send a lot of information with it but you can, you know, it's enough information that you can send the nuclear launch codes in the case of a devastating first strike by uh, whoever attacks us. That system is in place. It's been in operation for decades now, and it's our fail-safe uh, communication for, with submarine-launched ballistic missiles. And so, you know, that's the longest wavelengths I know about all the way to the shortest wavelengths I know about. In the experiment that I work on where we collide protons at ultra high energies, a lot of the particles that come out are gamma rays. And these gamma rays have extremely high energy. Now in this case, the radio end of the spectrum, we're talking about continuous waves, right? At the other end of the spectrum, a gamma ray is not a continuous wave. It's, it's in a wave packet that we call a photon. 
And we're going to get to that. That's, that's sort of the beginning. We're starting to think about the beginning of the quantum physics ideas that we're going to talk about in the final two lectures of the course, lectures eight and nine. But we're going to find that electromagnetic waves come in these little packets. And that includes visible light. Visible light is, you can think of it as a continuous wave, but really all that is is a whole bunch of individual photons added up on top of each other. When I shine this laser at the wall, it's right here in this part of the spectrum, 532 nanometers. And all of the photons that are coming out, we could calculate, and I think we actually do calculate the number of photons coming out of this laser. And there they are hitting the ceiling. Uh, you know, it's like 10 to the 18th photons per, per second or something like that. And they're all lined up with each other. And that's what makes this a coherent beam of light. Coherent means that they have the same wavelength, same frequency, and uh, hence that's why it looks at to have a, a very particular color. Now ultraviolet, x-rays and so forth, these are given off, all these are given off by atoms and molecules if you do certain things. Visible light will see in here how to make visible, how to make, how to excite atoms and then have them decay back down and give off visible light photons. But when you think of a photon, you should be thinking of something that is, in fact, an electromagnetic wave. All of, the, all, of the, all of the electromagnetic energy in the whole spectrum comes in the form of electromagnetic waves, whether it's a long, continuous wave or if we think of it as a little wave packet, like a particle, okay? So that gives us a little bit of a preview of where we're going with this uh, in terms of we're going to now turn from describing this electromagnetic wave as a continuous thing and see how waves and particles are one and the same thing uh, in, the, in the next two lectures.